Hey everyone and welcome to the Main Cave. My name is Megan and today I am bringing you my spoilery discussion slash rant of the Earth Children series by Jean M. Awul. I do have all the books here to show you. I own the entire series right now. Okay, it's falling over. There we go. All six books, each over 700 pages. I'm going to give you some spoilers today. So, uh, at the same time that I'm uploading this one, I should be uploading my non-spoiler review of this series. If you are interested in no spoilers, go check that video out. But if you're interested in spoilers and some ranting, which will, which is the main reason I'm doing this video because I really need to rant about the, some of the books with spoilers, that's what this video is here for. So if you are interested in knowing about the series and you don't care about spoilers, this video is for you because it is a long series and I get why some people are a little tentative about getting into the series. So, I'm going to start with the same backstory that I gave in the other video, in case you don't watch that video. So, Jean M. Owl, the author of the series, she did a ton and ton of research. She studied archaeology and anthropology, so she studied the Ice Age of the time, because this book is set 30,000 years ago in Europe. And she also took survival classes to learn how to make things with the surroundings like the people would in the book. She is just she did a ton of research into that and I that is commendable. I really like that part of the series. She was even given an award that I attempted to pronounce in the other video, but I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce here. It was presented to her by the French Minister of Culture and Communications back in 2008. And that's really cool. This book series also has an interesting publishing date setting, which does have to do with how she wrote some of the things. So the first book was published in 1980. The second book was published in 1982. The third book was published in 1985, the fourth book was published in 1990, the fifth book was published in 2002, and the sixth and final book was published in 2011. So that will give you a little bit of an idea of how long it took for her to write these books. The time period between books four and five were the longest, with 12 years there, and then seven years between books five and six. So that does play a role into how she writes things and some of the things that I'm going to complain about and talk about. Also, a little bit of backstory about the people in the book. It is set around two different human species that have separated the Neanderthals that we all know about. They're the hunky, stocky, very muscular, hairy people. They're hairy cavemen that we always think about when we think of cavemen. They're the ones that die off. And then we have the Cro-Magnon, which look more like what we look like today. They are the ones that we currently are descended from. And they are taller, they're muscular, but not as muscular and strong as the Neanderthals. And also everything that I say in relation to the history behind these books were correct at the time that she wrote the books. I have heard that some of the stuff is no longer thought to be true in our current time period because it's 2018. I don't know which parts are not true and which parts are, are still true. So I'm going to speak as if everything is true and whatever isn't. If you guys know, you can tell me down below or you can look it up later because I didn't want to look up every single thing that she researched to see which ones are no longer correct. So with... That background being said, I think I got everything I wanted to say for that. Let's get into the books. So the first book is Clan of the Cave Bear. There was a movie made off of this in the late 80s, early 90s. I kind of skimmed through one I found on YouTube. It looked kind of crappy, but I don't know. I didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't really feel like it. I felt like it would kind of ruin what I had in my mind of the series because it's such an intricate series to begin with with the writing that I just don't think a movie would do it justice or even a TV show, honestly. Plus a TV show would take a long time. So the idea behind the, the main idea that starts off the story is that Ayla, the main character, is a Cro-Magnon girl. She is about five years old when she loses her family in an earthquake. She doesn't remember anything before the earthquake. She is lost, she's hurt, she's starving, and she is saved by a woman of the clan, or the Neanderthals. They call themselves the clan in the book. She is saved by them. At first, they don't want her because she's one of the others, which is what they call the Cro-Magnon. But their medicine woman says, no, I, I think we should save her anyway. So they allow the medicine woman to keep her and raise her as her own. And that is where the story starts. It is a lot of stuff that Ayla has to go through. One, because she is not of the clan. She's a completely, almost a completely different species. She does not speak the way they do. She's not as strong as they are. She has to work twice as hard at everything just to keep up, keep up with their average pace of living. They are much stronger than her naturally. They age much more quickly than she does. Their women are ready to have children between the ages of 6 and 8, sometimes as late as 10. And for Ayla and her people, which are more like us of today, they aren't ready to have children until their teens. 
so she of course doesn't know that the clan does not know that so they just think she's odd because she can do that they think she's odd because she can cry people of the clan don't cry they don't speak a spoken language they have a very intricate body language and sign language kind of thing going on they have very few maybe a handful of spoken words so Ayla has to relearn everything she was only starting to learn a spoken language as a child so she has to try and forget that and really try hard to learn the sign language which is very hard for her just because of she's not born a clan person and there's a lot that she has to deal with she also has to deal with the fact that the son of the leader does not like her at all. He hates her for some reason. Every time that something goes right for Ayla, it tends to go wrong for him. And he just hated her because of that her entire time. He, um, uh, back to the son of the leader thing real fast. He is the son of the woman of the leader, his wife. Oh, they don't call it wife, but their mate really is what they call it. But at the time frame, both the Neanderthals and the Cro-Magnons, the others in the and the clan all think that babies are made from spirits mixing. They think that a male spirit and a female spirit got into a tumble. If the male spirit wins, a baby is born. They don't think it comes from sex. They think sex is just for pleasures. Um, the clan people specifically think it's just for the man to release his need, and that's about it. A woman is given a signal, and she's ready to go, and it's like, okay, here's my signal, let's do it, and they do it, and then it's done. It's really not anything besides that. Um, and Ayla questions that later, which is really cool. But that's what they think babies come from. So Ayla is given this totem of the clan of the, uh, of the cave lion. That's what it is. So everyone thinks not only because she's ugly and because of the others, but also because she has a very strong spirit and a clan totem that she will never have children. She ends up actually getting pregnant. We know as the reader, because the son of the leader actually ended up raping her. It was her first time. And all of her consecutive times having sex after that was only with him. He did it mainly because he knew she didn't like it. He knew she was subversive to him and she didn't like him. After a while, once she gave birth to her son, she realized, you know what, I don't even care anymore. He gave, She believed that she ended up thinking that sex equaled babies because otherwise why would we have to do this horrible thing that hurts? So she didn't tell anyone, of course, but she f really thinks that her son is a mixture of her spirit and bro and that guy's spirit, whose name is Brode, I believe. And her son actually is of mixed spirits, is what they call it. He has a little bit of the physical appearance of the clan, a little bit of the physical appearance of the others, of the Cro-Magnon. Wow, my light just kind of went down all of a sudden. And that kind of renews her energy. She also had a really hard birth, though. She got pregnant, I think, at 10, which for her is not good. She didn't know that, of course. Everyone in the clan ages way earlier. So it was an incredibly hard birth for her. She barely made it through. She lost her milk very early, and other women had to help feed her baby and help keep it strong, but she ended up making sure that her baby survived. But in the end of the book, basically the leader died and the bad guy who was the one who raped her came to be leader and eventually had a reason to kick her out with a death curse even though her body is not physically dead they now think of her as dead they don't look at her they don't register that she's there it was really hard on her she ended up deciding to leave her son because he would have a better life with his um her adoptive sister so her adoptive mother did have a daughter later and that, that sister said that she would take care of the son because Ayla didn't want to bring him with her, not knowing where she would go, what would happen to her. So she leaves. And that's basically the end of book one. This is such a good book. I loved everything about this book. I think it was so well done. Every plot, every the overarching plot, all everything was so good. This is when I really still enjoyed the descriptions of the flora and the fauna and the descriptions of what tools they use, how they made the tools, how they prepared their food and they made their clothes. She, the author really has good detail with that, I think partly because of the research that she's done, which does get tiring in, later in the books, but in this book it is so interesting, you're, for, you're newly introduced to the world, and it is such a good book, I love this one, I give it four and a half to five stars, it is my favorite book of the entire series, and I just love it. Maybe I gave away too many spoilers. Oh well, um, sorry, it's a spoilery discussion, so, book two, Ayla has left, this is the Valley of the Horses. So in this book, there are two lines, story arcs. There are her story arc and these two brothers. It's kind of obvious who the brother, how they'll meet at the end or that they will meet at the end. They don't meet until the end of the book. Sorry. But the main reason that Ayla has left, not just because of the death curse, 
but she's also trying to find her people, the others, the people that she was originally born of, not only to find someone to live with and to be a part of another tribe of people, but also maybe to find a mate. She was never going to truly find a mate to take care of her and her son back with the clan because no one liked her. She was ugly. She wasn't like everyone else. And that was it. She's always thought she's ugly because of that. So she's hoping that if she finds people of the others, she can find a mate. That's where the brothers come in. So the brothers going through their own trials, and it's really interesting. I enjoyed the brothers' story. Not everyone did. Some people in Goodreads are like, "This is stupid. I hate the brothers." I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what they went through. It's it was some it was kind of sad near the end, but you know. But Ayla's story is so interesting. She basically, after she leaves, she finds this little cave on a river near a really nice valley that she decides to live in for a few years. To and she gains so many skills. She really hones her crafts of basket making, of tool making, and everything, uh, saving foods and getting herbs, medicinal herbs. She really becomes very um, attuned with those, which is really nice, and she's gotten really used to the solitude, and she actually ends up taming a wild horse. Well, a baby horse. that She she killed the mother, and she felt bad about it, so she took the baby in and basically raised the baby from almost infancy for, to a full-fledged horse, and she has a horse through the rest of the series. And it's a really good book. I really enjoyed this one. A little less than the first book, but it was a really good continuation of the of the story. So I would probably give this one four out of five stars. And I think that's all the spoilers I wanted to give to you. I don't want to give you every single spoiler in the entire series because that would just be telling you everything. And there's enough that happens in the series that I can't do that. That would be a really long video. And as it is, it's already getting long and I'm only starting book three of six telling you about. So there are some things I've left out. There are some things you will still find out while reading the books. So this isn't a completely spoilery thing. Anyway, book three is the Mammoth Hunters. She has now met up with one of the brothers. They are, they have met these people and they decided to live with them for a summer and a winter. And they really become attached. Ayla is finding for the first time women to be her friends that aren't just there because she's another woman, because she's part of the clan, but people that are really enjoying her for who she is. She's making friendships, she's learning new skills, and I really love that. I love the connection she made with this tribe of mammoth hunters. Uh, they're called the Mammothoi. I'll put that name up here. And it it's just, I love that part of this book. It That part was really good. I love seeing her with that. She actually, even in this book, she saves a baby wolf because that mother died or she killed that mother because it was stealing her food or something and it had a baby. She saved the baby and she raises that baby up to adulthood. So now she has a horse and a wolf. So basically she has a dog and she has pets. But, you know, they're not like, I don't know, it's like they're friend pets, not just pet pets. And her horse gets pregnant and has a baby. Um, oh, that might have happened. Yeah, that happened in the third book. Um, I think, I'm a lot, I'm sorry. So I enjoyed the underlying plots of this book. There is an overarching plot of this book, which is really one just big mis miscommunication between her and one of the brothers that ends up becoming her mate later, but right now they're just like together. Um, you have to go through a whole matrimonial, just like getting married. They're dating, um, then they get married, So, but they call it a matrimonial, getting mated, not wife and husband. So they're not mated yet, but they're together, and they've told each other they love each other, they have great sex, apparently. I get tired of the sex scenes after a while, they can last anywhere from one to three pages. So they're cool at first, like, hey, they're having good sex, awesome. It's like, okay, I get it. They're having good sex. In this book, basically what happens with the overarching plot is that even though she's with this guy named, this guy, um, there's another man at the Mammoth Hunter's Lodge who, that starts falling for Ayla and starts to try and attract her to him instead of to the other guy. He's flirting with her. He's trying to get her into bed. Oh, one thing I probably should have mentioned in the book, I did mention in the book one, The Signal that um, women in the clan are expected to be ready for sex at any time. That's how Ayla was brought up. She still doesn't quite understand that with the others it's okay to say no. So she kind of just says yes to this other guy and they end up having sex. And this whole thing, they're stuck in the cave during winter and they don't get out much, but they still ignore each other, her and the man that she's supposed to love, and her and then this guy that's trying to insert himself there. And it gets to the point we're near the end of the book, like the whole book has this overarching plot that they think that, that she thinks he, her original man does no longer love her and he thinks she doesn't love her anymore or love him. They both think they don't love each other anymore, basically. So she's really getting herself pushed towards this new guy and she gets to the point where she's about to mate this guy. She's promised to mate him. They do go through all the things. It's the day of their matrimony, their matrimonial, 
and she hears that the guy she originally loved is going to leave because he can't stand it anymore and he's been planning to go home anyway to go back to his own people because he was doing like a, a journey, a travel. And she goes, oh my gosh, no, I can't lose him. I love him even though he doesn't love me. She runs off to find him before he leaves, tells him, I love you. I know you don't love me anymore, but I can't stand being without you. And he goes, what are you talking about? I've always loved you. I thought you didn't love me anymore. And then they say bye and then they leave and that's the end of the book. And I'm thinking, are you serious? That's how you solved that? She basically just broke that other guy's heart because they were literally about to get married. She left, she left him at the altar. And I'm, oh my gosh, there are so many, there were times in which they actually were left alone, she and the original guy, to talk. And they almost talked and they never truly did talk about things. And I don't know why. I mean, she, the author played it off as the guy had some issues with expressing his emotions like that. He was a very temperamental, angry kind of person that he's always trying to hold that temper. So he doesn't like talking about it. And that Ayla, since she grew up, women of the clan kind of like never truly talked back to a man. They always had their eyes down. They, even if they had something to say, they weren't like direct about it. So that was kind of an excuse. But at the same time, you know what? It's just something could have been done before making it all the way to the very end of the book almost meeting another guy, in which a lot of the times she even said, I would be happy with this other guy if I didn't love the first guy, but he doesn't love me anymore. <sighs> oh my god. It's just this whole thing that, even though I get that it's there to show that they could have issues, rocky issues at the beginning of their relationship, but it could have been solved in so many more better ways earlier in the book. The book could have either been shortened or could have been showing other subplots. So that is what annoyed me about this book. I give this one three, three and a half stars. It's still good to read if you are enjoying the series up to this point, but just try and grit your teeth through that part because it was just kind of annoying. So we're on to book four. They have left the Mamatoy and they are traveling across Europe to go to her love's people. Now they are on the eastern part of Europe and his people are basically in France. So they're traveling a lot. The Plains of Passage because they're passing over the plains basically. The first half of the book is kind of boring. They're kind of coming back into communication with, with each other, trying to touch each other again, and it's just some traveling, and that's kind of it. And then the second half gets really very entertaining. They come across this tribe of people that have really split. The, the women have taken over because this one woman is really pissed at men for some reason. You don't know why right away. And she basically has all the men cordoned off and enslaved, and she thinks that... If you do that, then only the spirits of women will mix to make babies and they'll only have girl children. But of course, that's not the case. They just have a lower birth rate now. Um, they still have babies because the women sneak off to go have sex with their men. But it's just a really interesting dynamic. I love everything that happened with that. I think the second half of this book was really good. And I would give this book three and a half to four stars. Kind of, If you can get through the first half, even skimming it, to get to the second half of this book, I would highly suggest it. I did enjoy that. And this book was really more of like a, a filler episode, you can say. They did have to, you have to, I mean, obviously, the time is going to take them from leaving the Mamatoy to getting to her husband, not husband, but her boyfriend's people, is a long time. It's basically crossing the whole of Europe. And so you have to write about that. You can't just skip over it. Obviously, something's going to happen, and I'm glad that she wrote it. It could have been shortened with the first half. But it's still a good book, and I still enjoyed it more than I enjoyed the third one, in a sense, just because of the overarching plot. So now we get to book five, and this is where the real issues start. Even though I enjoyed this book, and I actually don't remember a lot about it, I remember pieces here and there, but not as much happened in this book as I think it should have happened. There were a lot of fluff. Um, so basically, they make it to her mate's people. She is pregnant finally, which they've been waiting for, but the pregnancy and the birth and the baby are kind of like very small scenes in which you don't get a lot about that. And it's like, we've been waiting for that a long time. Why did you kind of just slosh over it? Her baby's name is John Ayla. John Ayla, really? This is not Bradgelina. We don't need to mix names. That's what they did. They mixed their names together because she believes it's really a, a, a mixing of his seed and her seed and not the spirit. So, you know, because she believes sex equals babies like not everyone else does. And I get that, but at the same time, come on, John Ayla, that sounds really stupid. Again, not Bragelina. I just, that really bugged me. And a lot of other things, uh, the Zell and Donnie, which is their, like, spiritual leader, notices that Ayla has a lot of knowledge about medicinal things and horses and the wolves, you know, she has control over them, that 
They say, oh, well, you really should be a Zell and Donnie. She's really, really pushing for Ayla to become a Zell and Donnie so that, because they believe that that kind of knowledge should really only be with a spiritual person and not with anyone else because that could cause strife or something. And I'm thinking, come on, that's so stupid. Why does she need to be a Zell and Donnie? Why can't she just do what she wants, which is be her mate's wife, you know, and have children and live a normal life, which is what she wants. It's what she's wanted this whole damn time. And then they push Zell and Donnie on her and she ends up doing it. I really hated that. I thought that was stupid. It's like, she doesn't have to do that. She has been against the norm this whole time. She hasn't really told many people, but she would leave sex equals babies and not spirits mixing and all these other things. It's okay for other people to know things. And I'm actually going to come back to this point at the end of the sixth book. So, and other things happen. She meets her maid's family. She, um, they have their matrimonial. She meets some of his enemies. There was like, a guy he had a fight with when he was a teenager before he started his travels, punched him, knocked his two front teeth out, and now this guy has less prospects because he's missing two teeth and he's hated this man ever since. It's this huge hole in his heart. I'm like, really? Okay, come on. There have been people with limbs and other deformities much worse than losing your teeth that have had mates and have happy, fulfilling lives, and this guy can't get over it? That's stupid. There are some other things, other people. There are some other mixed spirit children, or adults now, that have some issues. There was a woman that Ayla's mate left at the beginning and he didn't really, he was like kind of dating her. He didn't promise to marry her, but she thought he had. So she, he kind of left her at the altar, but altar, but not really. And so she has a hatred for them because they seem so perfect. And she hates that Ayla has this guy instead of her. And Morona is just, Morona is the lady that he left. And she's just a bitch, really. She's a petty bitch. And you know, I mean, some good things happen. She meets the family, and they like her. She gets married to him. They finally have their matrimonial, which is a really sweet ceremony. I enjoyed how they did that part. But a lot more could have happened. I feel like for 700 pages, this could have been, like, a 400-page book. So, and this is the point in which you get a lot of repetitiveness. So you're still getting the descriptions of the flora and the fauna, the tools that they make, how they make them, how they use them, all that kind of stuff, which at this point is getting annoying. But she's also repeating, for instance, how Ayla got a horse and how Ayla got a wolf and all these other things that happened. And it's not just once or twice to refresh your memory as the reader because, yeah, there's 12 years between this book and book four. But it happened like five to ten times in which she says, this is how Ayla got a wolf. Five, ten more times. I'm like, oh my gosh. As the reader, I fucking get it already. We know that that's how she got a wolf. We know that's how she got a horse. We know that's how this happened, how this happened. We get it. That's where she came from. We know all about the clan. We know about how her, her physical strength and all that stuff. We effing get it already. We just, we get it. So a lot of the repentance could have been taken down. This book could have been, there could have been more to the plot of this book to really fill the 700 pages or just take out the fluff and shorten the book. So that's that. I give this book three stars, I would say. It's not the best of the series. But she really could have done the series better so far. I feel like there's a lot of other things she could have done with it, the more stuff she could have added to the plot instead of adding all the fluff and filler, which would have made me a lot happier because now that we're getting to book six, The Land of the Painted Caves, I have a lot of hate for this book. This book sucks. I hate it. I just want to throw it at a wall and get rid of it forever. I find nothing redeeming in this book. So this book, unlike the other books, is split into three different parts. The first two parts are mind-numbingly boring. The third part is just reality TV drama, basically. I got through part one, barely not skimming it, and I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? Why is this so boring? Basically, what's happening in the first two parts is that Ayla is becoming a Zell and Donnie, and to do that, she has to go on this Donnie tour. Donnie is what they call the Mother Earth, the goddess who has created everything and from her womb. She has to go on a tour to see all the, the sacred caves of their land, of their region, which are the wombs of the earth, you know, where everything was birthed from. And that's it. They're just traveling, looking at caves. That is really boring. There's some lore behind it that you kind of already learned in the fifth book, and you're learning a little bit more in the sixth book. It's really boring, though. I don't really give a damn anymore. We're just looking at caves for two-thirds of a 700-page book. That was boring. I got to part one. The end of part one, I'm thinking, what the hell? Because part three, there's actually a time jump. I said earlier... Or maybe I said it in this video. If I did, if I didn't, then I'm going to say it now. The ending scene of one book is the beginning scene of the next book. There's no time skipping, which I love. It's literally like, if this right now is the ending scene of a book, the beginning scene of the next book would just be the next minute of this scene, basically. That didn't happen in this third book. It didn't start on the same scene as the fifth book. It skipped some time, and then part two skipped 
like three years ahead of part one or something and she's still doing this Donnie tour and other shit like that and then part three is right after that those um cave tours so I'm getting to part two and I'm thinking what the hell is going on I'm at work I'm on my lunch I wikipedia it and I'm thinking okay all the shit happens in part three this doesn't sound like shit I like but I'm gonna skim it anyway I skim it. It is all reality TV drama. I hate it all. There is one page that could have been redeeming, but wasn't. Because basically there's this one page, There's this, they're at the summer meeting that may or may not be their own. It's this big meeting they have every summer of all the, the local clans to like come together because they're all Zell and Don they're all some name and there's different, there's like clan one and two and you know, whatever. Anyway. They're at a summer meeting. There are some people from the Mamatoy from book three that are at the summer meeting. And Ayla's like, oh, look, I can see you. It's nice to see you. How you been? How is everybody? She gets maybe three or four questions in. One of them doesn't even get answered. And then it goes on to the next ship. Really? That's what you give me for the past characters that we met and loved and no longer get to see again? What is that? That's not okay. And beyond that, that was the only almost redeeming quality of this book. <sighs> That's just so much. She's... And because Ayla is becoming a Zalandani, this most Zalandanis do not have a family to take care of, so it's okay for them to go through all these trials and hardships. And because of she has a family, she has a daughter and a husband, and horses and animals to take care of, she's been neglecting her sexual duties to her husband, and he ends up having sex with Morona, the woman he originally left, that hates them. And they've been doing it for months, and Ayla comes across them. I'm like, really? That's what you do with them? I get that you want them to seem more normal, but that's fucking messed up. With anyone else, but really, Morona, she's such a bitch. And on top of that, to get back at him, there's... I didn't really read everything. I kind of skimmed through it. There's a scene in which there's a mother festival in which it's okay to share pleasures with anyone because pleasures are a gift from the mother. Pleasures are sex, basically. They are a gift from the mother. They're meant to be shared and enjoyed. And at a mother ceremony, you can have sex with anyone, in front of anyone, it doesn't matter. So Ayla gets drunk, and as you read the scene, I actually read this particular scene, she kind of falls over, there's some men following her. There's one particular guy named Laramar, or however you say his name, who's been an asshole this whole time, doesn't take care of his kids, he's a drunkard, his only skill is to make drinks, which they call barma instead of beer or whatever. He's basically a waste of their community. He have se has sex with her. She ends up falling over drunk. He, like it says, it says, like, rips her legs apart and shoves himself inside her. And it's basically Ayla getting back at, at her mate for having sex with Marona. I'm like, really? Those two people? That's who you had them cheat on each other with? And it wasn't really cheating because throughout the entire series, you know that these people are okay with non-monogamous relationships. Sex, because they don't associate it with having children, is just an okay thing but this whole time they've been monogamous, so it's like a conquest to have sex with one of these, one, either Ayla or her mate. And so it's like this big thing. But then later, the Zelandani, because Ayla's not quite a Zelandani yet, explains to Ayla why it was not okay for her to cheat on him, but why it was okay for the man to cheat on her, because men have more need than a woman does. They need it more often. And it's like, you know, maybe you shouldn't have been as mad at him. I'm like, you know, you were neglecting him anyway. That's typically what a husband does. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Really? I, she's basically get. I hate the word mansplaining, but she's basically getting mansplained by a woman. It pissed me off. And there's supposed to be a big reveal, a big surprising twist at the end of this book, which is basically Ayla telling everyone in the in their tribe that sex equals babies and not just pleasure. That babies do not come from spirits; they come from sex. And like this big reveal to everyone else, but it's not a big reveal to us as the reader. We have known this since the first book. Literally, this is book six. We've known it since the first book. The main character has basically known it since the first book. That's the big reveal. And then it ends. It's not like, how does the how does everyone deal with this? It says, well, now, how will this affect their culture? Book ends. What do you mean? You could have started that. That could have been your starting to book six. And we could have seen how it affected their damn culture. We could have seen how it affected everything about them. That's like half of their life is pleasures now it equals babies how do we know who's babies who what do you mean it equals babies that it's like a, a reveal to them but we don't get to see how it really affects them there's like a, a conversation about it for two pages and then it's done like that's your big reveal i was expecting a lot more than that i mean come on we already knew that that's not a big reveal to us that's not a twist that she told everyone i've been waiting for them to tell people like come on <sighs> i need to take a breather breather i need to calm down because I'm starting to yell, and I'm very sorry if I'm hurting your ears. But this book is shit. Yeah. 
I think book six needs to go away. There are so many other things she could have done with this series. In my head, I'm thinking, as I was reading the series, this should happen, this should happen, and I want this to happen. The things I wanted to happen did not happen. The things I did not want to happen happened. I did not want Ayla to be as Ellen Donnie. I thought, why put her under that? Why? Why? Why can't she be out of the norm? She's already a much of like a Mary Sue does everything perfect. The only thing she can't do is sing, basically. And she has feelings about be have, being in a monogamous relationship, even though not only her people, but the people that she grew up with of the clan do not have monogamous relationships. You can have sex with anyone, albeit in the clan. It's more like do it with your wife, but if you really need to and she's not there, you can do it with someone else's wife. But really, this entire culture that she's either one that she would have been raised in, monogamous, monogamous relationships, sexual relationships really aren't a big deal. It's not a big deal to have sex with other people, but for some reason, she had to put a- I don't- I mean, I don't mind. I'm in a monogamous relationship, but that's very different of our time frame from then. So, I don't see why it was such a big deal for these two to be so monogamous. Okay. I'm gonna stop yelling. I'm very sorry for yelling at you guys. I could go on for a lot longer about how stupid this book is. I hate book six. If you read the series, please don't read book six. It doesn't- it doesn't solve anything. It doesn't- it doesn't push the plot further, it doesn't add anything to the plot at all. It's really just stupid. So I'm gonna stop talking now. That is the end of my discussion-y rant of this book series. Overall, I give the entire series, all six books, like three stars. If it was just the first five books and some of the fluff was taken out, there was some more added to the actual plot of it, I feel like I would have given this book like a four star series if six if the sixth book wasn't there and there was more to the first five books. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done ranting. I'm sorry. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have read all six books and if you agree with me or you don't agree with me. I'd love to know if you loved book six or if you liked it. Why did you like it? Please tell me because I hate it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever stop hating it even if you tell me why you like it. Anyway, let's discuss things in the comments below. And I'm done for now. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.